Yes, of course. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Assalamualaikum no, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. We are delighted to welcome you to the International Guest Lecture 3 in 1 program with the title Plant International um, Plant Breeding Classical to Modern Approach for Better Crops. Let me introduce myself. My name is Azeriko Tama Arifin and I will be your MC for today's class. Before we start the class, I will remind you that in the end of the class, there will be a link of attendance form. Please do not forget to fill the form. And for the students of plant breeding class, there will be another link with quiz in it. Thank you. Selamat pagi, Bapak Ibu. Bapak Ibu dosen, mohon maaf. Telat karena ada gangguan pada jaringan internet. Uh, sebelum kelas dimulai, saya ingatkan kembali bahwa di akhir acara akan ada link presensi. Dimohon kepada Bapak Ibu dosen serta mahasiswa untuk mengisi link, mengisi presensi pada link tersebut. Terima kasih. Um, ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to listen to the expert opinion on role of biotechnology for Plan breeding delivered by Professor Yukio Ozaki. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Yukio Ozaki. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Is, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, it's clear. Yes. Thank you. To tell you the truth, now is at uh, 12.45 and exactly good afternoon in Japan. <laughs> this is my fourth and last online lecture in plant breeding. Thank you for Professor Dr. Arifin for providing me such an excellent and honorable lecture. Last time I made, sorry, last time I made a presentation of the plant bleeding focusing on role of biotechnology for plant bleeding. Today, I will talk about best practice experience in plant bleeding activities. I remember I did not introduce our university, Kyushu University, so that I will talk about our university before talking about today's lecture. Kyushu University is a Japanese national university located in Fukuoka, the southern part of Japan Islands. Kyushu University was established in the beginning of the 20th century, and the number of academic staff and students are 2000, more than 2,000 and more than 18,000, respectively. In October 1991, Kyushu University decided to integrate and relocate its campuses in Hakozaki, Roppon-Matsu, and Harumachi to Motoka Kuwabara region named Ito Campus in order to solve the problems of aging and narrow facilities and the dis displaced location of campuses. The Ito campus was opened in October 2005, and since then, the relocation has been carried out in stages. The integrated relocation project was completed in September 20. 18 and the Ito campus where approximately around 20,000 students, faculty and staff are active, was completed. The area of the campus is the largest in Japan, 271 hectares in main campus. Very large. Then let's go back to the lecture. The purpose of the lecture is to explain the breeding of cucumber and asparagus as selected crops, including the economic importance, origin and history, genetics and cytogenetics, 
general botany, reproductive biology, and the common breeding method used. The scientific name of cucumber is Cucumis sativus. The crop was originated in northwest region of India and have been cultivated since 3,000 years ago. Not 300, but 3,000 years ago. Now, do you know how many percent of water in a cucumber fruit? The answer is 96.2 percent water in the fruit. The helpful information is that milk was 88.7 percent water. It is therefore recorded that the least, the least caloric fruit in the world in the Guinness Book of Record. In contrast of low calorie, cucumber fruits contain minerals and vitamins. Besides, the content of minerals, mi minerals and vitamins increase when the fruits were pick pickled in rice bran paste. Cucumber is a monoecious plant. There are two types of flowers, female and male flowers. And both female and male flowers bear in one plant. As shown in the pictures, there is an ovary in a female flower, but no ovary in a male flower. Only the ovary in female flower develops to fruit and no fruit from male flowers. The ratio of female versus male flowers in one plant depend on the cultivar, namely genotype, and growing temperature and day length. There are three types of cultivars, monoecious, subgynoecious, and gynoecious. This figure is a schematic illustration of three types of the cultivars, monoecious, subgynoecious, and gynoecious. Red triangle, red arrowhead shows the female flower. Monoecious is a genotype in which female flowers bear randomly. The female flower bear randomly. Subgynoecious is a genotype in which less female flowers in lower nodes and many female flowers in higher nodes. Gynoecious is a genotype in which all the nodes bear female flowers. Ratio of female versus male flowers also depends on growing temperature and day length. High temperature and long day length gives the decrease of female flowers. In contrast, low temperature and short day lengths result the increase of females. When year-round production was attempted, the natural habit of these characters are one of the barriers in cucumber production. Plant growth regulators can also control the ratio of female versus male flowers. For example, application of gibberellins increases male flowers. Ethylene increases female flowers and the silver nitrate, an ethylene inhibitor, increases male flowers. There are five fundamental cultivar groups. North China, South China, pickles, slides, and English greenhouse genotypes. Among them, North and South China types are very important for developing the current cultivars in Japan. English greenhouse type is also important because the type only shows parthenocarpic character, meaning automatic fruit set without pollination.
Most China type cultivars are originated in North China and introduced to Japan in 19th century. This type is an early harvesting variety. North China type cultivars are originated in South China and Southern Asia and introduced to Japan in 5th century. This type is a late harvesting variety. North China type cultivars are cultivated in hot summer because the temperature in winter season is too low to cultivate in Japan. These cultivars are selected under hot summer so that many female flowers can bear in long day and high temperature. That is to say, the cultivars are insensitive to day length and tolerant to high temperature. In contrast, the cultivars show weak growth under low temperature. The color of the words of the fruit in the cultivar is white. South China type cultivars are cultivated in autumn to spring because the temperature in summer season is too hot. These cultivars are selected under autumn to spring so that many female flowers can bear in short day and low temperature. But female flowers decrease when the plants are grown under long day and high temperature. That is to say, the cultivars are sensitive to day length and tolerant to low temperature. The color of the words of the fruit in the cultivar is black. Numerous cultivars have been developed by using North and South China type cultivars. Pleasant cultivars show insensitive, insensitive to day length tolerant to low and high temperature for all year round production. Next, I will talk about the genetics and the breeding of asparagus. Asparagus is one of the most worldwide cultivated crops from tropical to sub-Arctic regions. Since it, is, it shows high profit crops in Japan, the cultivating area are stable or gradually increasing. The first topic of asparagus breeding is intra and interploid cross compatibility and trisomic production in asparagus. Asparagus is a perennial crop that is economically productive for one, uh, not one, but for 10 or more years. Asparagus is a dioecious plant, so that it is normally impossible to make selfing in this species. The dioecious nature of this species results in its high level of heterogeneity and the difficulty of make inbred lines by sexual crosses because of the impossibility of selfing. Thus, genetic analysis of phenotypic character in this species has not advanced as compared with other seed propagated crops. The inheritance of male, female and male are similar to human being, namely, Female, genotype of female is homozygous, homozygous recessive, and the genotype of male, male flower, male, male uh, plant is, is heterogenic. Then the crossing between them are carried out, then male and the females are segregated with a ratio of one to one.
In such group, it is useful to clarifying the inheritance of morphological characters and find the genetic marker linked to the genes controlling phenotypic characters to design efficient breeding program. Primary trisomics are the plant which has a normal chromosome component plus one extra chromosome. Trisomic are useful materials for confirmation of gene location on particular chromosome and verifying the independence of linkage groups and associating the genetic linkage groups with the individual chromosomes. Primary trisomics have been produced in more than 30 plant species, as shown here, Anselinum majus, the Arabidopsis tariana, and so on. Trisomics has been isolated in the majority of diploid species from the progeny of triploid and triploid diploid crosses. In addition, trisomics plants can be sometimes obtained from diploid spontaneously or from mutagen-treated diploids. The objective of this study was to clarify the intra- and interploid cross-compatibility and variation of ploidy levels in the offspring from intra- and interploid crosses with reference to trisomic production. Firstly, cross-compatibility among various product asparagus cultivars are carried out. Diallel crosses were performed among diploid, triploid, and tetraploid cultivars. Diploid means a two set of chromosome genome, and triploid, tetraploid are three and four uh, components of the genomes. The fruit set, fertilization rate, seed germination rate are investigated. Fruit set can be calculated by dividing the fruit, set fruit divided, divided by the uh, pollinated flowers. <laughs> and fertilization rate, the maximum, there are six ovules in one fruit in asparagus. Then, a fertilization means the uh, fertilized ovules from pollinated ovules, uh, dividing, divided by uh, pollinated ovules. And the seed germination rate uh, can be uh, calculated by germinated seed divided by the uh, sown seed. This is the result of the fruit set in intra and interploid crosses. This is a female parent and male parent, and diploid, triploid, tetraploid, and diploid male, triploid male, and tetraploid male. And this is fruit set. When diploid female are coordinated with diploid, triploid, tetraploid males, the fruit set were high, relatively high or relatively high. And when crosses 4x tetraploid crossed with tetraploid, the fruit set are also high. But as a combination of crosses shows the intermediate or lower fruit set. High fruit set can be observed when the diploid were used as female parent, but among them, 2x crossed with 2x shows high fertilization rate, but the, and also the relatively high uh, fruit fertilization rate 
well, can be observed when uh, diploid crossed with tetraploid, but most of them resulted in the empty seed, seed without embryo. This is a seed germination of the diarrheal crosses. All the seed shows the high seed germination rate, irrespective of the diarrheal cross combination. This is a conclusion of one and one. <laughs> High fruit set can be observed. Diploid crossed with diploid. Diploid crossed with triploid. And diploid crossed with tetraploid. And deep tetraploid crossed with tetraploid shows high fruit set. And high fertilization rate can be observed. 2x times 2x, 2x times 3x, and 2x times 4x. But HOMA2 combination shows perfect seed, but the 2x times 4x resulted empty seed. Next, difference of foreign germinability in diploid, triploid, and tetraploid cultivars are investigated. Fresh pollen grains were incubated at 25 centigrade for 24 hours on the artificial medium consisted of 30% sucrose and uh, borate and agar. Diploid cultivar, three, uh, diploid cultivar, Cito, Franklin, uh, Gainlin, and so on, uh, and the triploid cultivar, Hiroshima Green, and the tetraploid cultivar, Seto Green, uh, uh, supplied for this investigation. This figure shows the average pollen germination rate on artificial medium in diploid, triploid, and tetraploid asparagus cultivars. Diploid asparagus cultivars shows intermediate pollen germination from around 30 to 40 percent. In contrast, triploid cultivar shows very low pollen germination. And the tetraploid pollen shows the intermediate, uh, around 15% uh, pollen germination. Mm. Then pollen germination, germinability shows the mm -hmm. Deep, diploid, tetraploid, and triploids. Next, difference of in vivo pollen tube growth in intra and interploid crosses were carried out. Diarrheal crosses were performed among diploid, triploid, and tetraploid cultivars. And pistils, pollinated pistils were collected and fixed, softened with eight normal NaOH, and stained with 0.1 aniline blue solution dissolved in uh, K3PO4. And observation was made with fluorescent microscope. This is a sample result of pollen tube growth in a style in 2X crossed with 2X and 2X crossed with 3X for uh, six hours after pollination. There are many pollen germination in 2X times 2X, but relatively low number of pollen tubes penetrated into the uh, style in 2X crossed with 3X. The difference of the number of pollen tubes may depend on the difference of the germinability in, as, as 
as song in the artificial medium. Then, priority levels of male parents was a crucial factor of the difference of the pollen tube growth in intra and interploid crosses. And the pollen tubes reached the bottom of styles in most pistils in 12 hours after pollination in all priority combination crosses. The next, rapid determination of priority levels in asparagus by flow cytometry. Firstly, suitable stage of samples of four flow cytometry are investigated by using deep road cultivar, spheres, immature and mature crowd fields. And the priority estimation were carried out by using haploid, diploid, triploid, and the tetraploid cultivars and the strains. This is a simple result of the flow cytometric histogram of nuclei isolated from spares, haploid, diploid, triploid, and the tetraploid asparagus. In the preliminary examination, it was found that spares and young immature crowd fields are the suitable samples for flow cytometry. Prominent peaks were recognized at about 50, 100, 150 and 200 channels in haploid, diploid, and tetraploid spheres, respectively. Then, flow cytometry is useful for determination of priority levels in asparagus. And it is applicable to large scale priority screening without chromosome counting. Priority levels of progenies from intra and interproid crosses with reference to trisomic production are investigated. Progenies from diarrheal crosses among diploid triploid and tetraploid cultivars were provided for flow cytometry, and progenies from crosses between diploid and triploid cultivars were supplied for chromosome counting. As is expected, fluorescent intensity of the progenies from 2x crossed with 2x displayed similar value as the diploid, 100, around 100. And most of the progeny from 2x crossed with 4x, and 4x crossed with 2x, exhibited similar value as triploids. And the, uh, most of the, and the progenies from 4x crossed with 4x showed exhibited tetraploid. In triploid crossed with triploid, three of four progenies were presumed to be near diploid, and the other was estimated to be near triploid levels. In the reciprocal crosses between diploid and triploid, the fluorescent intestines for all progenies were similar to those of diploids. Progenies from 4x crossed with triploid, 3x shows vari vari variations in DNA content with the range from triploid to tetraploid. Although the vice versa crosses brought near tetraploid progenies. In the present investigation, flow cytometric analysis indicated that hyper and hypo diploid, including trisomics, would be produced in reciprocal crosses between diploid and triploid. Root tip of chromosome 
of hybrids were observed and various aneuploid were recorded. The number of chromosomes ranged from 18 to 23 and trisomics with 21 chromosome, chromosome uh, can be observed. The number of chromosomes ranged from 18 to 23, as shown, as stated previously. The trisomic were found to occur at high frequency. Thus, the pro D of progenies are 2x crossed with 2x, 2x crossed with 3x, and 3x crossed with diploid, 2x resulted around 2x diploid. And 2x, 4x, 4x, 2x resulted around triploid. 3x, 3x resulted around diploid to triploid. And 3x, 4x, and 4x, 3x resulted from triploid to tetraploid. And 4x, 4x resulted around 4x, as expected. Two X crossed with three X crosses is the most efficient method to produce high number of trisomics. And transmission of X plus one gamete occurs with high frequency through pollen grains than embryo sacs in asparagus. Sorry. The second topic of asparagus breeding is genotyping of asparagus cultivars with SSR markers. Asparagus is a dioecious plant so that it is impossible to make selfing in this species as, as said previously. This is why most asparagus cultivars exhibit high degree of natural heterozygosity, causing irregular yield. Molecular markers such as rapid RAPD, AFLP, RFLP, alozyme, etc., are generally useful for genetics and breeding in crop plants, including asparagus but they have some problems such as dominant expression or low polymorphism. SSR markers are useful for cultivar identification, hybrid test, and individual discrimination because of their co-dominant expression and high polymorphism in many plant species. They have been established in asparagus, but their applicability as genetic marker has not been resolved. Therefore, we carried out two experiments. The first, not two, but three experiments. The first is on the inheritance of SSR markers and the linkage arrangement of the loci. And the second experiment was genotyping of asparagus cultivars with different ploides. And the third is origin of polyembryonic seed by SSR. First, in inheritance of SSR markers and the linkage arrangement of the low side. We made three combination of crosses. Cross one is a cross of Hokkai 100 crossed with UC157. Cross two is welcome, crossed with welcome of different strain. And the cross three is gold shots crossed with Hokkai 100. We analyze these progenies and their parents.
We carried out PCR with six SSR primer sets, AG2, AG3, AG7, AG10, TC1, and TC7, and genotyping. PCR and electrophoretic analysis of ASP1, T7, SP region were also performed. This region is the sexual determination locus. This table shows the result of goodness of fit test for segregation patterns at six loci. All SSR loci were polymorphic, polymorphic but it is very difficult to read the value of the segregation. Then this is a sample of the segregation. Prospected parental, parental genotypes of AG2 were 157157, uh, sorry, 151 slash 157 and 151 slash 157 in cross two. And the segregation of the cross progenies 20 to 34 to 11 for three genotypes was not significantly different from Mendelian expectations at P value equal. 0 0.05. I'm sorry, the uh, mistranslation of the word. This is shows the chi square. Similarly, the segregation test in all SSRs of the crossed progenies confirmed that each SSR locus was governed by a single locus. This is a result of linkage arrangement of SSR loci and ASP1, T7SP. ASP1, T7SP is a marker tightly linked to sex determination locus. Three combinations of crosses were applicable to evaluate the independence of 20 pairs of SSR loci and ASP1, T7SP. Segregation distortion was recognized in four pairs but there was no evidence the linkage of in AG3, AG7, AG3, TC1, and AG10, TC1. On the other hand, segregation for the pair ASP1, T7, SP, AG distorted in all crosses. Since SP1, T7, SP is a marker tightly linked to the sex determination locus on the L5 chromosome. The AG3 locus is expected to locate on the same chromosome. Therefore, we carried out the experiment. Sorry. Next. The genotyping of asparagus cultivars with different priorities are carried out. Two diploid cultivars, ZenU953 and Welcome, one triploid Hiroshima Green and one tetraploid Purple Welcome were examined. Five plants in each cultivar were provided for SSR genotyping. This shows the peak pattern of AG2 region in the three cultivars. Two peaks with similar height were recognized in diploid ZenU953, so that genotype was 151-155. Higher and lower peaks appeared at 157 and 151, respectively, in triploid Hiroshima Green HIG3F, so that the genotype of this plant was determined to be 151-157-157. Similarly, genotype of purple welcome PWC3F and PWC1M were found to be 167-149-149-151 and 149-157-157-157, respectively.
we determined the SSR genotypes in all cultivar examined. Five alleles were detected in AG2 in this enlarged table. All plants in ZenU 95C had an alleles 155, and the polymorphism was detected in 151 and 157. The genotypes of cross parents were 151 slash 157 and 155 155. Genotype of welcome were 151 slash 157 with no variation. And the parental genotypes were 151, 151, and 157, 157. Similarly, we detected alleles and estimated the parental genotypes and genetic purity of deep road cultivars in AG3, AG7, AG10. We determined SSR genotypes in all cultivars examined. Five alleles, sorry. Genotyping of triploid and tetraploid cultivars was also successful in all SSR regions, and variation with the, within the cultivars was recognized in seven regions, several regions. There were 34 alleles in six loci, and alleles per locus ranged from four to eight. In experiment one, we found one remarkable plant, 07M61, a progeny of the cross of gold shots and Hokkaido 100 in five regions. As you can see in this figure, these higher and lower peaks in AG2, AG7, AG10, and TC1, and three peaks in AG3 were identified. This suggests that the individuals would be triploid or aneuploid. This is a result of flow cytometric analysis. The upper figure shows diploid cultivar Hokkaido 100 and the lower one shows 07M61. Triploidy of the 07M61 was suggested from histogram patterns. There was no report that triploid was obtained from the crosses between diploids in asparagus, and this may be the first one. We estimated that this triploid was derived from the fertilization, sorry, fertilization between unreduced eggs and reduced sperm nucleus based on the SSR genotypes. Thirdly, origin of polyembryonic seeds by SSR are carried out. This is asparagus seed. Normally, one seed, is only one shoot and root were uh, sprouted from one seed, but this is so normally one seed contains one embryo in asparagus, but there are seldomly, seldom seed containing multiple embryo. This is a twin embryo in one seed. This and this. And the origin of polyembryonic seed is, but is unclear. Then 18 combination of crosses were carried out and obtained seed were sown on petri dishes in light at 25 cent degree. And the polyembryonic seed were investigated and they were transplanted on the artificial MS medium. Two individuals were separated from each one seed when the plants grow normally. SSR genotypes and the proidy with flow cytometric analysis were carried out.
This is a result of SSR genotype and ProID level estimation, and also the sexuality by the ASP1 T7 SP. F means female and M means male. And this is a cross 07 M23 as female parents and gold shots as male parents. For example, genotype of AG2 of 07M23 is 147.155. And genotype of AG3 is 216218. And so on. And genotype of AG2 in gold shots is 155155. And so on. There are two combinations of twin seed, G1, G2, and H1, H2. In case of G1, G2, the genotype of G1 is 147-155 in AG2 region and 214-216 in AG3 region. Genotype of AG2 was 155 in G2 because this plant is haploid. And the genotype of AG3 was 216 in G2 plant. In case of G1, these arrays were derived from female parent, parents. And this gene were derived from male parent. But in G2, only one gene exists in one plant derived from females. It is impossible to uh, identify from male to female, but the other genotypes shows that the plant are derived from female parents only. Namely, G1, G2, in one seed, there are two embryos in one seed. And one embryo were derived from the fertilization between eggs and sperm cells. But the other embryos are derived from the gynoecious embryogenesis from egg. As a result, uh, from the result of the genotypes and the ProID levels. And other combination, H1 and H2, both are haploid. And the genotypes are equal between these two plants. Therefore, this, this, these H1, H2 are derived from the Genoecious embryogenesis from egg cells. And they are divided to embryos. The uh, to, truly one uh, twin seed from one egg. By investigating the genotypes of SSR and ProD labels, there was 10 types of twin seed in asparagus. This is a conclusion of the present uh, study. And SSR markers are useful for hybrid test. And AG3 of SSR is considered to be on the L5 chromosomes where, uh, where sex determination locus locates. And SSR genotypes of different polyploid cultivars were distinguishable. And origin of polyomvenic the embryonic seeds could be dissolved. Yes. This is all the presentation today. Thank you for your kind attention.
Thank you, Professor Yukio Ozaki, for the presentations. Um, for the audience, maybe if you have a questions, please raise your hand or uh, mention your questions in the chat box. Okay, Konita, uh, do you have any questions? Uh, please, please uh, which class are you from? It's, it's, okay, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'm Konita from Class D, man. Uh, I want to ask about in molecular marker, there are several methods. For instance, oh, for example, RAPD, ESSR, SSR, and etc. Uh, I was wondering, Sensei, are there any new methods for molecular marker in the future? Thank you. Thank you for the uh, uh, question as about the molecular marker. Nowadays, the blood uh, sec analysis or RNA sec analysis are carried out by using the next generation sequencer. These are the uh, newly established uh, markers by using the next generation uh, sequencer. But the SSR or some uh, uh, classical molecular mark uh, classical molecular mark markers uh, have advantages because uh, it is not it is not necessary to use uh, so high prices of the instrument. The, uh, each marker has each advantage of this. Is it okay? Uh, okay, it, uh, sir. I get it. Thank you for your explanation. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, is there any other questions? Please don't hesitate to raise your hand. Mm. Oh, there is a question in the chat box, Sensei. It's from Givano Isaki Milianto from Class B. Uh, the question is, I would like to ask if other types of cultivars such as pickle type, slice types, and English greenhouse type were also developed in Japan, considering where most of the cultivars developed in Japan are sensitive to day length and tolerant to low temperature and cold. Chat box. Other types of cultivars, such as pickle type, slice type, and English greenhouse type, are also developed in Japan. Ah, yes, thank you. And the uh, English greenhouse types are the very important cultivar groups for Japanese cucumber production because only these uh, types of the cultivars uh, shows the parthenocarpic character. Parthenocarpic means uh, fruit set without pollination or fertilization. Fruits can bear automatically then, but the original uh, other cucumber types did not show the parthenocarpic character. And then the person uh, carpic character were introduced from English greenhouse type into other uh, now, now established uh, cucumber uh, cultivars. And the pickles and the slice types, uh, it is not uh, popular in pickles in Japan, uh, pickles cucumber in Japan. Then uh, these cultivars are not used. Uh, for the establishment of cucumber, current cucumber cultivars, I think. 
Is it okay? Is it okay if I know it's like Sensitive to the and tolerant to low temperature and high. Uh -huh. mm, yes, ma'am. Uh, well, where are uh, is it okay? Can I'm sorry, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay, is there any other questions from the audience? I think it was a very good presentation. Uh, Professor Yukio Ozaki is also uh, mentions about the place where he lived in Kyushu uh, Island. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if uh, the audience are curious about Japan or anything, even though it's not related to the study, maybe you can also ask to Professor sure. Yukio because this is the yeah. last yeah. class from uh, the in one program. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Okay, uh, Dewa Ayu from class E. Please raise her hand. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. I want to say good morning to Mr. Ozaki and everyone in this room. My name is Dewa Yuputudira Devinda from class E. So what I want to ask is related to cucumber breeding. So in our plant breeding courses, we have to uh, plant three different uh, types of plants. Two of them is cucumbers. Uh, two of them is cucumbers with different cultivars and one of them is honeydew melon. So what I want to ask, uh, and in this practicum though, we have to uh, cross pollinate uh, the plant with, with each other. So what I want to ask is, is it uh, possible to cross pollinate uh, a different species of plants, but in the same family? So if it's possible, uh, what factors do we need to pay attention to? So it is uh, considered to be a success. That's it, thank you. Thank you, I think you, you are talking about the uh, interspecific cross pollination between uh, Kukumis sativus and Kukumis mero, like, uh, melon. Then uh, I do not remember the uh, previous report about the interspecific hybrid between these two species, but ordinary it is it may be uh, difficult to uh, make hybrid by crossing these species, but. Uh, there are possibility to obtain the hybrid by using the embryo rescue or something like that by using the uh, tissue culture but uh, i'm not sure then but the, there is a room to try it <laughs> i think you me on the mute <laughs> oh okay okay uh, thank you for the explanation, uh, Mr. Ozaki. I want to know the objective of the interspecies hybrid production, these species, for introducing what character into this species or something like that. But I want to know the purpose of the interspecific crosses or only a... a make the wide variation of the characteristics? Uh, this practicum, I think uh, it, okay, it's not to uh, find some characteristic like you said. I think it's mm -hmm. just so will the students know how to uh, cross-pollinate the plants, mm -hmm. uh, the, the practical fit, not to find any type of characteristic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the uh, questions and answer. Um, there is another question from Naomi Grace. Naomi Grace, time is yours. 
Okay, thank you for the opportunity, Ms. Azeri. So I want to greet uh, Mr. Ozaki. Good morning, Mr. Ozaki. So uh, first I want to apologize because I cannot uh, run my camera because I have um, trouble with my connection. And my question is, so uh, your former explanation uh, tell us about the uh, many female, even in long day and high temperature, for cucumbers cultivar. So I want to ask, and I'm wondering, uh, what is the differences uh, about, about uh, female cucumbers and male cucumbers? Is that any a different characteristic? So the female can intensive to day length and also tolerant to high temperature, sir. That's my question, thank you. Thank you. In, in cucumber, uh, there are, uh, male flowers or female flowers in both cucumber and uh, asparagus. But in asparagus, the uh, only one plant bears uh, female and one, only one plant bears males. But in case of cucumber, uh, there are both male and female flowers in one plant. And but the ratio of the male and the females are different. And uh, uh, long. Low, uh, low temperature and short day length induces many females. And the uh, uh, objective of this, for this species is to make the different uh, di uh, next generation by using the many, by, by producing the many seeds. Uh, is it okay? Uh, to. Cucumber plant can be grown under Low, high temperature and long day length vegetatively, but uh, the plant cannot grow under winter season because then the female flowers bears before the winter season. And I want to know the question. <laughs> you meant to say the, uh, the objective of the uh, female flower bearing habit or not? Yes, sir, kind like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, then in long, long day and high temperature, the cucumber plant can grow vegetable uh, vigorously itself. Then there is no uh, necessity to produce, uh, less necessity to produce a seed for one next generation. But uh, under low temperature and uh, short day rings, low temperature and short day rings is a signal for near coming winter. And uh, uh, in winter season, seeds, it only seeds can be uh, stored. Uh, uh, the plant can be uh, survived as only in the seed not plant, then a uh, plant want to produce the seed for the next generation. I cannot explain so nice, then please uh, support Arifin Sensei. <laughs> I think that there is a little bit of misunderstand of the student, I think, Sensei. Ah, sorry. Because, yeah, it, no, uh, she, she, she doesn't know that the, uh, what I say, and cucumber is not teosius, but monosius. No, yes, mon yeah, yes. monosius. So Monocious. she uh, she guess that that uh, what I say, cucumber is like uh, uh, asparagus, hmm. but it's not different. So yeah. that's why she asked about the how to induce the the female uh, female uh, flower. I think. I think like I catch my this because my internet also <laughs> still not stable. So I'm very, <laughs> very, very, very sorry. Yeah. I played <laughs> by this internet attack today. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I have to change many, many times mm -hmm. to other line. In asparagus, the sexuality, sexual their expression is stable. Depending on the mostly genotype, but no, oh, no yeah. eff effect of the environment in sexuality of asparagus. But in oh, case really. of in case of cucumber, 
the ratio of male and female flowers uh, depend on the genotype and the environment. Then yeah. uh, when the environment are short day length and low temperature, the, the plant, that is a sensor of the near coming winter. Because the when the environment are short day length and low temperature, then winter season is coming soon. Then the plant cannot survive the as a plant in winter, cannot survive the in plant itself. Then the plant won't the plant to make plants to survive the winter season as a seed. Ah, really? Then a uh, female the, the plant. It bears fem many fe female flowers for producing many seed for surviving winter season. That is the reason why the, uh, the environment can uh, environment uh, affect the sex ratio in cucumber. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Yeah. Mm. So the season will affecting the flower blooming, yes, sir. Yes. In, in not only cucumber, but the uh, cucumber relative species, the similar phenomena can be observed. Melon or uh, melon. Pumpkin. Melon. Can, pumpkin. <laughs> Something like that, yes. Oh, the family and Kikubitachi. Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Thank you for the explanation. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any other questions from the audience? So, by the way, uh, Prof. Ozaki, the asparagus uh, serenity is, is completely because of the Chromosome configuration, or uh, there is a, a cytoplasmic influence. Asparagus sexuality? Yeah, sterility. Sterility? Ah. Un, yeah, unfair. Ah, uh, so sterility means, uh, I, I think the sterility of asparagus means uh, sexuality of asparagus because male, male flowers show the degen degeneration of the pistil and uh, female flower shows the uh, anther degeneration. Then mm. uh, that is governed by a single locus in, on the uh, nuclear genome. And, uh, nuclear genome. Yeah, and yes. the genes can be, uh, to, well, genes are already identified by three groups of the researchers. But this only, only in the nuclear genome, yes. not in the cytoplasmic. No, no cytoplasmic effect. effect. And the, uh, the uh, sexual, sexual uh, controlling systems are not only in asparagus officinalis, but uh, other uh, dioecious asparagus species. Mm -hmm. That is uh, conserved in the other uh, dioecious asparagus species. Yeah. There are two types of asparagus. The first is uh, dioecious and the other is the hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite asparagus species are uh, of uh, also exist in the world, and the not uh, native native former former asparagus species are born in the African uh, oh, wow. continent, yeah. like hum like human being, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. and uh, that is a uh, hermaphrodite, and uh, they are. Uh, distributed from African continent to the Europe and uh, Asia. And mm. when the species are uh, away from the Africa, they go into, uh, they are evaluated as the dioecious species. And uh, the asparagus officinalis is uh, originate from the Mediter Mediterranean regions in Europe. And uh, the other, there are many uh, uh, dioecious asparagus species in Asia. And uh, I'm now trying to make 
Basic Disease Resistance Asparagus by using the Asparagus officinalis originated in Mediterranean and Asparagus Cusianus. Cusianus means Kyushu, Kyushu University. Ah, Kyushu. Really? <laughs> yes. And because the uh, Asparagus officinalis shows the disease susceptible because they are uh, originated in the less rain region. Mm -hmm. Very low volume of the uh, rain, and they show the disease susceptible, uh, such as stem blight or formopsis, something like that. Then, but uh, in contrast, asparagus species in Kyushu or Asia region, uh, uh, Kyushu region, there are many rain and high humidity, and they, they showed the high. Uh, disease resistant mm -hmm. at the distance of these species are very long but the, it can be possible to make crossing and uh, ob uh, obtain hybrids then i'm now trying to make the disease resistance asparagus by using the qcn asparagus qcnis and asparagus officinalis so is is there any one uh, asparagus or non non edible Asparagus. Mm. Uh, that you meant to say that the Cusian is uh, edible or not? Or, no, I mean, or, or because here also sometimes I, I found uh, mm -hmm. people call asparagus, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, the leaf is uh, look like asparagus, mm -hmm. but this very uh, undetermined and climb like this. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know exactly is this real asparagus or or just non-edible, non-edible mm -hmm. asparagus means other species. Mm -hmm. What what do you think? Sir? Most of the uh, something asparagus is not uh, asparagus officinalis, but relatives. Well, sometimes sometimes uh, something asparagus can be called as in the different genus, not species, but different, ah, different, different genus. 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 Yeah. And of course, there's sometimes different different species, but sometimes different genus. But the morphology is very similar to the asparagus. Then, Pardon me. Yes, yes. But now I am using the asparagus cusianus. That is a, a same genus, but different different species. And they are used as medicine. That Pardon means me. we, we can... It, you can take the uh, plants, then it, it is no, uh, there is no barrier to. Uh, use this it. also diocious or monoceous? Uh, Diocious, yes. Diocious, yes. 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 Because like, in, in case of uh, salak, you know, salak is uh, tropical palm uh, kind of sa oh, salaka. Uh -huh. oh, uh, yeah. uh, this plant is also diocious, mm -hmm. but some case we, we, we find. Uh, monoceous ones, mm -hmm. so they are hemoglobin also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm what, not. What, what about in, in asparagus? Uh, to, there are some report of the interspecies hybrid between a uh, hermaphrodite asparagus species and the dioecious asparagus species, but it is impossible to make crossing because uh, mm. uh, that that means we cannot obtain the hybrid plant by crossing between the species. If it is possible, uh, we can introduce the hermaphroditic uh, character to the edible asparagus. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. Of course. Uh, we so can, we so can do you make it. experiment also in your lab? Uh, yes. Uh, what about uh, cucumber or, or just asparagus now? No, uh, now there is no, uh, uh, we do not carried out a cucumber uh, investigation now, uh, previously, oh. but uh, uh, the asparagus study is now undergoing. Mm. Yes. By, su by supporting by the national, as a, a national project, one of the national projects. Yes. Okay, thank you for yeah. information. <laughs> So back to MC, please. Master of Ceremony. Azari.
Ha dili sang. <laughs> because now this is rainy season so oh, oh, oh. so yeah, rainy season is usually uh internet link is not oh, unstable. Unstable, yeah. That is a problem. Azari So well, uh, any other question? I think there are one more question, Prof. Okay. From yes. Wahyu Satrio. Uh, I have permission to ask about the presentation that have been explained. What are the problem with cucumber and asparagus farming in Japan? And what is the best type of cucumber and asparagus that exist in Japan? Thank you, sir. Anything sense please <laughs> support <Sorry>. me. <laughs> I cannot catch the please, meaning of this question. Again. Huika, please. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, what are the problems with cucumber and asparagus farming in Japan? Ah, the hmm. problem, yeah. Problem, with yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think you, you meant to say that, that you want to know the prob pro problem yeah, in the cucumber problem. production and asparagus production. Mainly the stability of the production is a serious problem because the, the growth of the, these plants uh, depend on the uh, environment. Environment means the uh, temperature and humidity or the sunshine. Then that, that affects the uh, photosynthesis in each, each plant. Then the photosynthesis influences the plant growth and uh, yield. Then the stability of the growth is a, a problem and for Japanese farmers. Is it okay? Is enough or uh, uh, one more prof? Uh... What is the best type of cucumber and asparagus that exist in Japan? What is the best asparagus and the cucumber? And then the yeah. high, high quality and good looking is very important for Japanese it's market. Commercial, no. CLS? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it from Taki? From Taki is it, Ah, uh, in Japan, in Japanese farmers production, main, oh. main, uh, yeah. In asparagus, uh, the, uh, the sakata seed and sakata, uh, sakata and the uh, prefectural experimental station established cultivars are main, but the uh, most of the Cultivars, main cultivars are introduced from the USA and the Netherlands because there are uh, asparagus breeding is not advanced in Japan. Then uh, the current cultivars, majority of the current current cultivars is made from made in USA and Netherlands. But the, in cucumber, oh in cucumber, the taki seed and the sakata seed are the uh, major uh, cultivar company. Of course, in, in addition, the Kurume Genshu Ikuseikai is also the main uh, seed company of cucumber located in, in Kyushu. Is it okay? So in 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 here in Batu Batu City there was a uh, asparagus plantation oh, uh, really? oh. 30 years ago, I think. 
30 years ago. <laughs> but I uh, was getting fired because uh, uh, I think the problem in productions and yield oh. production is, mm-hmm. is too low. And I think, yeah, only two or three years on the production. Mm-hmm. I think the... I think, the, what, what do you think? Is it because of, uh, I mean, temperature is not enough to, or uh, it's too high or do you think what is it? I think the temperature is no, not a problem, but the disease resistance, <laughs> not the, the, uh, disease susceptibility is a serious problem in cultivating the uh, asparagus in a hot region. I think the, there are many uh, Asparagus production in Thailand and the Philippines and the southern region of China. But uh, two or three years, uh, the yield is very high, but the yield uh, decreasing year by year because of the low, uh, low, resistance, uh, low re- resistance of the disease. I think that is a, a most serious problem. There are no re- disease resistance asparagus cultivar within the species. Is it okay? I'm very sorry, Sensei. Mm. I, I don't catch yeah, because internet is very, very un- unstable. Ah, yeah. I, I think yeah, the, yeah. The, the you you said that the production in Indonesia uh, asparagus production in Indonesia was uh, continued continued only a few years. I think the yeah. problem 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 is caused from the uh, low resistance of asparagus uh, disease. The species do not have the disease resistance. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then the yield decreases year by year. <laughs> okay. Hello. Azeri san, come back. <laughs> Bahaya Satria, di sini ada. Thank you, Prof Ozaki, for the answer. Thank you. Oh, MC has come back. Hmm. Yep. Okay, I'm really sorry. Um. Okay, I think, uh, what time is it? Oh, it's almost 12 uh, I think the discussion session is over. Uh, thank you for Professor Yukio Ozaki and the audience for having a really active discussions. Um, before we close this class, I would ask to Professor Arifinur Sukiharto, to give a closing statement. Uh, ladies okay. and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Arifin Nurskiarto. Okay, thank you, uh, Rajeri. First of all, uh, uh, I think there is no word to say that, except uh, again, we were very, we all uh, very, very appreciate and gratitude to Ozaki Sensei, to Professor Ozaki, the kindly giving lecture. I think this moment is a special experience for both sides, for all of, especially for all of our students. Um, and we want to make a short report to Professor Ozaki that uh, the participant in your lecture uh, is 
uh, rounds uh, from I mean uh, up and down, but around 185 to uh, 276 persons or participants, and in average, I think it's uh, more than 200. It's around 218. Uh, and for quiz, I think it is good news because uh, uh, the students respond for the school uh, for all the school quiz uh, from uh, Sinkinta and from uh, Ujaki Sensei. Uh, the score is uh, range from uh, 68 to uh, 92. So that's mean it's uh, good enough for uh, achievement. Uh, our students, and uh, we believe that this is very, very uh, give benefits to our students, uh, especially for good experience and practice in English and uh, learning and plant reading. <clears throat> and of course, uh, from this moment, we don't want to uh, stop in this uh, program, but we restart, restart because uh, this post after I, I was graduated from uh, Kish University uh, on behalf of a uh, collaboration between universities, because at that time around 20, more than 20 years ago, uh, 25 years ago, Professor Okubo has uh, belonged to horticulture, same as uh, laborative from the Onizaki Sensei. Uh, came to here for two or four times, I think, because at the time we have a, a mutual cooperation between university. And now uh, we, we reach that. We hope. This will not be stopped <laughs> again. And of course, we have a next close uh, program, uh, Professor Ozaki, that uh, I inform you. Uh, we hope you're kindly to make uh, one of review of uh, our lesson subject uh, plans, our lesson subject plan, especially in plant breeding. Uh, biotechnology and seed production technology. So uh, we hope you're kind to make a review and I will send, uh, need your help to review because a review from outside is a uh, uh, mutual effect from the uh, quality of our institution here. So this is important uh, information that I shall inform you. And again, we are very, very thanks for your clients' uh, lecture and very nice lecture. We hope uh, next semester or next year, we will meet again. And of course, all the us. Organizing committee, we appreciate also to Ika, to Ajari, to Afif, and our, department, our head of department, to Norahmi. Uh, All we thanks. And again, we are very, very sorry for unconvenience uh, facility. Maybe you, didn't, you, you will not find in Japan because you, in fact, uh, we have uh, still some uh, problem like uh, internet connection or something like this. So we didn't feel uh, convenience. Again, thank you very much for Oyaki Sensei and good luck for our students. Uh, that's all. Uh, Thank you, Professor Arifin Nur Um 
maybe uh, there is one or two words from uh, our head department of agronomy, Ibu Nur Rahmi Ardiyari. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Ibu Nur Rahmi Ardiyari. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Madam, uh, I can hear. Can you repeat again? Because this is a very uh, not good connection, maybe. Yes, uh, yes, please. Bu Nurahmi Ardiarini, can you please give a closing statement or maybe one or two words? Okay. <laughs> uh, Uh, this is uh, Prof. Arifin here. Yeah. Okay, Honorable uh, Head of Plant Breeding Laboratory and uh, also as a coordinator uh, this course, Prof. Arifin Nursugirko. Honorable Prof. Ozaki, a speaker from TUC University and uh, dear colleagues and the students. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as the participant as uh, at the three-in-one guest lecture plan breeding course, I'm pleased to speak to you at the closing of this event. I believe that uh, productive progress has been made. I believe that this uh, guest lecture is an excellent example of successful cooperation. I'm uh, grateful to all of you for being part of this event. Thank you uh, for all the speakers, moderators, participants, and the committee that are progressing this important event to a successful conclusion. Thank you for taking part and contributing to this success. Let's say Alhamdulillah, I now declare this event officially closed. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Nurahmi Ardiyadini. Uh, this program is about to come to the end. I hope you have found the lectures on this three-in-one program are informative and helpful. Thank you very much once again. Till we meet again in maybe another program. Uh, see you. May you have all have a great day. See you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor yeah. Ozaki. Thank what, you. What about the second? Nice to meet you. Thank you, <laughs> Professor Ozaki, <laughs> Parifin, Unrani, Parifin. Thank you so much. Okay, see you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Professor Ozaki. I will. Uh, Amit Prof. Arifin. Eh, terima kasih, Bu.